Greetings Views NYC Resistance. So tonight I'm in the Bronx and I came across this traffic stop and as you can see already one of the passengers outside um, and she's getting um, searched by a female cop. So I'm going to try to be as fair as I possibly can as I analyze you know what 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 I'm seeing here. So um, looks like the passenger is being totally compliant. She's allowing the officer to search her, opens her jacket, you know, and her um, pants line, everything. So now we have another female um, occupant stepping out of the vehicle. She's about to be searched. Um, it looks like the um, the driver and some other people are in the back being questioned by two more officers. And so we but we have another um, female occupant about to be um, patted down and searched by this female officer. So we in the Bronx right now, and um, this is on Third Avenue, and um, you know these cops are just just doing their job, keeping everybody safe. You know, um, I, I don't know what's going on because I just pulled up on it and seen everybody um, being told to exit the vehicle so they could be patted down. You know thing with this is that you know you have a lot of people going to jail for victimless crimes that's where nobody called the police for for their assistance but you know they just pull over random cars and um you know start searching people looking for uh, an excuse wow so you see the girl the girl getting her um her breast felt up you know what would they have done if there wasn't a wasn't a female officer present you know what i mean they wouldn't even be able to you know, to touch, you know, well, nowadays, who knows, who knows what these cops would do, um, but, you know, as far as I know, you, if you're not a um, female officer, you're not supposed to touch a female, you know, but, yeah, so you got, um, you got all these black, um, black people, both female and male at the, um, at the bump of their car being, um, interrogated one by one by, it, it looks like three to four NYPD officers that um, spilled out of that, that big van that you see in the back. And now the um, female officer, she's about to um, search the car looking for weapons or contraband, you know, which is like a joke to me because, you know, who makes all the weapons and who sh brings all the drugs in the country, you know? You know, as though we don't know about, you know, what's going on in Afghanistan with the opium and, the, you know, who's really bringing you know, why there really is an influx of heroin in the country, you know, um, who was given um, Mexican cartels fully automatic weapon in exchange for cocaine and, um, and you know, marijuana, you know, it's, it's crazy, you know. They let the drugs in the country and then try to put you in jail for either selling it or using it, you know, so... Um, so we got, the, we got the female officer, she's... she's um, looking through the vehicle as her partners um, occupy the, the occupants of the vehicle, questioning them, talking to them, smiling and laughing with them. You know, if we don't find anything, we'll let you go. It's not going to be no no big deal. It's a routine search. You know, I mean, at least what the, that's what they you, they would tell me when they stopped me, you know. They be trying to smile with you. And, you know, we're just doing our job, keep people safe. You know, if we don't find anything, we'll let you go. You know, sometimes they lie to you. They they'll sometimes still give you a ticket anyway, you know. I try not to talk about the um, the incidents that I've been through that I haven't, that I don't have on tape because, you know, I base this whole channel on um, what I can prove visually, you know. So it looks like the female officer has concluded her search, hasn't found anything. She's, you know, everybody's returning to the vehicle, you know. Everybody thinks the worst is behind them now, but, you know, let's let's continue to watch and see what happens. I've been telling people for years, like, you know, not 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 disre disrespectfully, not in a dis disrespectful way, to decline to talk to cops. But I've been I've been telling people, you know, you know, give the officers your 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 paperwork, your ID, you know, your license, you know, like whatever they're required to get by law, give it to them. But um, do not engage them in conversation because they're trying to put you in 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 jail. You know, if they can't find anything in your vehicle. You know, they're going to try to get you to talk yourself into jail. And I've seen it time and time again. And, I, and I've been telling people and, you know, you guys, y'all got to share the videos a little bit more because it could save somebody's life. It could save somebody from, from having a criminal record that could prevent them from, 
pursuing the career they want to that they want to pursue, you know, and prevent them from having a criminal record that's going to follow them all the days of their life. That's what a lot of these cops want to do. They want to give you a criminal record so that you can't compete with their children, so that you're sure to work for their children when you get older. You know, a lot of these cops right here, I, I guarantee you, they're from either Long Island or Queens. They don't live nowhere near the Bronx. You know, you'll never bump into them while you're shopping at the movie theater, having a good time. Once they get home, 20, 30 miles away from where they work at, you know what I mean? That's where they take off their uniform. That's where they put their gun belt down. You know what I'm saying? And they're never going to bump into you after they destroyed your life. So, as you just seen, everybody got searched. They sent everybody back in the car. You know, and um, it looks like they... Right now, those are those are all cops back there talking. You see, if you look if you look in the rear of your, rear of the um, the rear of the car. All right, he he just sent the driver back. He just sent the driver back in the car. Okay, he just released the driver. Now 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 we have three cops in the rear of the vehicle talking amongst themselves. They're like, look, you know, it's the end of the month. I haven't met my quota yet. You know, we haven't found anything. What are we going to do? Damn it. We, I, I just searched the car. I didn't find anything. You sure? You know, I, hey, there's, there's a little dirt on the floor. You know, um, I'm just I'm just trying to interpret what's going on because, I mean, they just searched everybody. Everybody got back in the car. Now you got three cops there talking amongst themselves. What else could be they be talking about? You know what I'm saying? You thought everybody was free and clear, right? You thought everybody's going to go home tonight, right? <laughs> Yo, you better think again. This is the NYPD, and they got illegal quotas. They got to make arrests, and they got to write tickets. They're like, hey, listen, man, we got to come up with something, man. Well, I'm about to be penalized. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, here we go again. <laughs> I got to laugh because this is like, this is crazy. It's like it's, it's like the Twilight Zone. <clears throat> so now the girl's saying, listen, I, I told you everything I know. Um, you know, you told me if I was honest with you, you, you let me go. Um, I, I didn't do anything. I'm not a criminal. The cop is like, yeah, yeah, I'm just doing my job. I'm here to keep you safe. I'm here to protect you. You know, um, I'm one of the good guys. You can trust me. Talk to me. I was like, I, I, I let you search me. I let you squeeze my breast and, and put your hands in my pants and everything like that. No, no, get get, get to the back. I'm not done with you now. We, we got to get a, get an arrest one way or another. You know, you, you kids are too young not to have a criminal record now. All right, so next one comes back out again. <laughs> Oh man, I know. I know if you you ain't see it, you wouldn't believe it. You wouldn't believe this story if you wasn't watching at the same time. All right, <clears throat> come on, ma'am. I I thought you said that you know. Um, if I told you everything, I know you. We could go home. Uh, I told you everything. We, I'm just I'm just with my friends. It's, it's, it's Saturday night. We're having a good time. You know, I I ain't doing anything. Hey, listen. Um, hey, I, I got my job. You know, it's not me. I'm doing the best I can. I'm just a cop. You know what I mean? Come on, look at my face. Does it look like I got a man to go home to? Come on, you know, I, I need some OT. I need some overtime. If I don't meet my quota, they're going to dock my pay. They're going to, you know, um, bust me over to, to um, Staten Island or some someplace far from, you know, that I don't live. They're going to they're gonna punish me. So I, I got to do this to you. I got to give you a criminal record. I'm, I'm sorry, okay? So, you know, go on, go to the back of the car next to your friend right there while I, while I try to um, <clears throat> entrap the, the rest of your friends, okay? You go stay in the back. I'm, I'm, I'm going to um, start tripping you up with a bunch of, bunch of questions. You know, until I could find um, some sort of reason to get y'all in, in jail, you know. So, um, you know, gonna step over here. Um, yeah, yeah um, now, um, what did you tell me earlier? That's not what your friend said. Your friends tell me something different now. Hey, look, um, I don't know. I just, you know, I let you search me and this and that. So this is what's going, this is what's going on. That's why I tell people, hey, listen, keep keep your mouth shut. Don't You don't got to talk to these people. They're here to hurt you. They don't like you. You know what I mean? This is your enemy. I've been telling people. They've been saying, hey, hey, shut up, NYC Resistance. You hate cops. You're evil. You're racist. You're full of hate. Don't say anything about the good NYPD. They love you. They, they care about us. They're here to keep us safe and protect us while we're sleeping in bed. All right. Um, you know, you, you, you step out the car now. I got, got some more questions for you. So this is the, this is the good NYPD. You know, the, the big city of New York. All sorts of crimes supposedly happening. Hey, look, ma'am, I told you everything I know. Nothing's going on. I I, I want to go home. I I don't have any guns. I don't have any drugs. I'm, I'm a good person. The cop is still still there talking. I mean, I mean they're they're, they're going to keep you there until you get aggravated and frustrated and and then demand to be released. At which point they're going to say, um, this I think this borders on borders on um disorderly conduct. This is you know this is bordering on a arrest arrestable offense. Yeah, but but you're holding me. You're detaining me. I haven't done anything. <laughs> you see, what I'm saying you haven't found anything. Can can I go? 
And a lot of times people say, hey, learn your constitutional rights. Listen, you don't have any constitutional rights. The second you start talking about your rights, the cops start calling you a ghetto lawyer. You know, they say, oh, oh a ghetto lawyer, huh? You, you know your rights, huh? And then they start getting mad and, and, and enraged, and they want to jam you up even more. You see? So all, all this now is talking. Because, you know, why would they have searched them and send them back in the car and then now take them back out and pull each one over to the side individually and talk it to them one by one? When I laugh, it's not because it's funny. It's like it's like a little um, pressure valve. It's like a, like a stress relief for me. So I, I got to giggle every now and then. But this is nothing funny about this. It's people's lives being destroyed. And when they go to jail and get criminal records, they come back unable to get a job and then end up living a life of poverty because they got arrested for, for nothing, for talking and getting angry. You know what I'm saying? You know, because they couldn't understand why they was being harassed and detained for like 20, 30 minutes. You know, they about to start bugging out and going wild. Yep. <laughs> I mean, it, 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 it's, it's so crazy, man. And they said they set black people free for this. Yep. They put in the 13th Amendment that... Slavery was abolished unless you're convicted of a crime, at which point it becomes legal again. You see what I'm saying? Now everybody's starting to get frustrated and, 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 and upset, which, which, which is what they want. That's what we've seen at that, with that bus stop arrest. They detained the guy for no reason, held him by his jacket. He's like, what did I do? I gave you my, gave you my, my, bus, I gave you my um, bus ticket. I gave you my ID. Why are you detaining me for? Because after a while, people start getting angry. They want to they wanna be released. And the cops will keep you there until you get frustrated and mad and start acting out, at which point you go to jail and they meet their quota. They don't care. Yeah, you know I mean it's nighttime, they is about to punch, they're about to get off. Now they get their overtime, they get their um they, they meet their monthly arrest, they get in good with the with the captain. That's what this is all about, putting you in a cage for money. You know, as citizens look on and say, um, you know, the NYPD are good, they're keeping us safe. Does anybody here look dangerous? I mean, everybody got searched. Nobody had no weapons. Nobody had no nothing. You know, these, these kids literally talked themselves into jail. That's what you get for trusting these people and talking and, 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 and talking to them. That's why I've been warning y'all. I've been asking y'all, please share the videos. Please share the videos with your friends and your family to, to know that this is going on. The NYPD is nothing but a business. This is a slave trade. You see what I'm saying? The cops make money off, off of your arrest. They want overtime, and then they try to put you in jail. So they can make a slave out of you. Bottom line, this is modern day slavery. Mass, this is mass incarceration is modern day slavery, and I'm showing you like like they're making every effort to put these to put these young people in, in jail. They're not giving them the benefit of the doubt. Not. Nah. They had a little conference at the back of the car, and they said, "Nah, we gotta we gotta jam these kids up, man. They're too young not to have a criminal record. We gotta we gotta put something on their record. Make sure that they they get denied if they wanna um." You know, run for office in the future, or have a gun, or you know, have a legal gun. See? Yep. Just like I told you. Ah. <laughs> uh, NYPD, they love the screams of anguish, man. It's like wolves. It's like wolves circling a a sheep. There you go. They got what they want. Got what they want. Get back in the car. I say, get back in the car, punk. See, motor, the, the driver got out. What's going on? No. You're going downtown. <laughs> Been telling y'all folks, you see what I'm saying? This is just the other day. This is recent. Been telling y'all for years. Y'all don't want to hear me. So your kids your kids going to have to suffer. Y'all don't want to listen to me. Y'all want to trust the police. Y'all want to trust people from Long Island and Queens to keep you safe. This is how they keep you safe. You know, stores getting robbed and um, people getting raped. All sorts of things going on. They're here for 20, 20, 30 minutes trying to trying to give these kids criminal records and put them in jail. That's why when real crime when real crime happens, they they tell people to call 1-800 Crime Stoppers. They need your help for real crime because they busy revenue generating. You know what I mean? They're there making their overtime pay. You see another little piglet just showed up. You know? He wants to get in on the action. He put up across the street. You can't see his, his, his car is out the frame, but yeah. That's just how it is. It's a day in the life. And, and, and then I got to hear, oh, you oh, you black people commit all the crime. You know, um, NYPD statistics say that you black people commit all the crime. Well, here it is. Here it is, folks. This is how easy it is for a black person to, to, to get a criminal record. 
You see? Now, I'm sorry, dude. You know, you, I, hey, they got to go to jail. We did all we can to let you go when they when they didn't. When, you know what I'm saying? They didn't have to take them kids to jail. They didn't have to do that, but... You know what I mean? It's not their kids. They live 30, 50 miles away from here. They don't, You think they care about your kids? Mm-mm. Yep. So I did manage to get an interview with the driver to find out what happened. And, um... So, I'm going to show you that. So, essentially, what the driver told me, he said that there was a small pocket knife on the... On the um, floor of the car that the um, female officer said she found a small pocket knife and um, nobody would own up to it so I posted about three videos where people got arrested for pocket knives there was one one video where they had the, um where they had that makeshift um, checkpoint on Gun Hill Road where they pulled over that um that Nissan and they had the two um, Spanish guys sitting on the curb and the um, cop was laughing as he played with the switchblade and then we have that other video where um, we had that older um Latino man, you know, he, um, had a little pocket knife that he used to cut his oranges with. Um, he was arrested for having that pocket knife. And now we have um, about um, three teenage girls um, getting arrested for uh, for a small pocket knife on the floor of the car. You know, that everybody said, I, um, I don't know what, what happened. So, I mean, we live in the freest country in the world. Um, I mean... In, in New York City, we, we have no Second Amendment. We can't defend ourselves. We have to um, be totally dependent on um, NYPD for um, protection. If you say, if you complain about um, the mass extortion, the harassment, they say, how dare you, you ungrateful Kurd? How dare you not praise us for your protection after they've, after the politicians have disarmed us and made us totally dependent on the police for safety and security, um, basically make, making us all pray um, to criminals that know that basically everybody's unarmed. So if you even have a small pocket knife, you can go to jail for that because they want everybody totally disarmed. You can't even have a sharp object. You know, it's okay to go to um, Target or Walgreens or Walmart and buy a whole package of knives, but you must you must transport that those knives right to your kitchen. You know what I'm saying? If you get caught in transit with the knives that you purchased in any store, <laughs> you go to jail. So that's the... That's the logic of it. You know what I'm saying? It's kind of like, you know, they say this is the United States of America, but in Colorado, you could walk into any um, weed dispensary and just, I mean, just Caucasians are just sniffing weed. Oh, this one smells delectable. This one smells nice. I'm going to buy this one. But here in New York City, if you have a small bag of weed in your pocket, you either get a summons or go to jail. You see what I'm saying? So it's the United States of America, but all the laws from state to state are all different. You know I mean, you can have a, a legal gun in one state, cross over and come to New York City and get, and get arrested. And that's if you're a veteran. I mean, you could be serving the country, fighting for freedom in another country. You know what I'm saying? Come back to, to America and get arrested for, for having a gun. So that's where we live at, folks. I mean, we just, I mean, we have to pass this information along. I mean, the cops are acting very predatory. I'm not, you know, I'm not saying that um, the concept of policing is, is a bad thing. I mean, it, it's a great idea that people who are, who are fit and um, able can protect other people who are not able to protect themselves. That's a great concept, but the way but the way it's it's being um, administered is like something of extortion and tyranny. You know where we see the cops driving around talking on their cell phones, cops running red lights, going to Dunkin' Donuts and doing whatever they want. And then when they and then when it comes to time to the end of the month, they just look for excuses to arrest people. So um, I'm I'm not I'm not gonna um, just drag this out. Um, I like I like to thank everybody who donated. Um, from my from my um, previous requests in my last video, and um, I like to encourage people who haven't to donate because I I want to continue to do um, what I'm doing, and I really don't want to have to think about money while I'm doing it. As I do this, I want to be able to, you know, help the people I love and not um, have to worry about money, and also be able to to remain in the streets doing what I love to do because I love I love bringing you guys this information. I want to um, educate people. And um, just show you what's really going on and how easily you could get a criminal record, especially when you're black and you live in, um, you know, what NYPD calls a high crime neighborhood. You know, what I mean, I mean, it's, it's hard to come by the crime, but it's easy to come by the police corruption. Anytime that the, there is a crime, the police always need your help. They can really solve crimes by themselves because they're out there writing tickets and harassing good people that are really doing nothing. Um, like I said, um, these are victimless crimes. 
you know, where, where there is no victim. No one was in danger. No one needed saving. But yet um, people are having their their records, their names destroyed by the NYPD, labeled as criminals for for these frivolous arrests that followed them all the days of their lives where um, people don't um, a aspire to be anything anymore because they say, damn, I can't get that job because I've, I've been arrested before. Now, every time you fill out an application, you have to check that box. I've been arrested before. You see what I'm saying? So it deters people from, from really wanting to achieve their dreams. And I think, I believe in my heart that that's what NYPD cops, a, a lot of them, not all of them, but a lot of them, and many of you who are witnessing this are just as guilty because you're witnessing it and not doing anything, so therefore you're complicit. Just like if I stand by as a crime is being committed and I'm there, then I get charged along with everybody else who actually committed the crime. I, I'm guilty by association. So I say the same to cops, that you're guilty by association because you know about the quotas, you know what's going on, you know that innocent people are being arrested and harassed for nothing, but still you keep on um, remaining silent and collecting that paycheck. So I see you as just as guilty as the cops that are actually perpetrating these crimes against people. So it just has to stop. So um, like I said, man, I mean, I can't think, I can't thank the people enough who have already donated. I mean, I, I got to make it up to you in another video. I'm like, I'm not even, I was like hesitant to even ask, but thank you. Thank you. I'm, I, I'm just, I just hope that I could live up to your expectations by continuing to do what I'm doing. Um, thank you for watching. I appreciate it. Um, Y'all take care.